Welcome everyone, this is Justin Chug with Sable, and today we'll be talking about building lists and building list strategies. We've talked about lists in the past. Uh, today's training is going to be a little bit different, but uh, we will be getting started here in about four minutes. If you'd like to join us via the webinar, you can do so at Insable.com slash web, and that'll take you directly to the webinar tool. It's the same link that was found if you received the email invite. Um, that should take you directly to the webinar sharing tool. We are in lecture mode. <clears throat> Just keep that background noise to a minimum. But if you'd like to ask any questions, you can use the chat feature or send an email to any of our team members. We are recording this, so if you'd like a copy of the recording, uh, feel free to reach out. We should be sending that out later this afternoon or early next week. Again, welcome everyone. For those of you who are just joining us, this is the Sales Hacks training call. We'll be getting started here in just a few minutes. You're welcome to join us via the webinar at Ensable.com slash web. And again, thanks everyone. We'll be getting started here shortly. Welcome everyone. For those of you who are just joining us, this is the Sales Hacks training call. We'll be getting started here in about three minutes. Feel free to join us via the webinar at ensable.com forward slash web, the same link that was found in the invite. If you would, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat function. We'll take care of those at the end of the call. Also, if you need a copy of the recording, that will be sent out hopefully later today or Monday morning. Welcome, everyone. For those of you who are just joining us, we'll be getting started here in about two minutes. Today we're going to be talking about list building strategies and some best practices. Again, welcome everyone. We'll be getting started here in just a little bit. We are in lecture mode, so if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat function at the end of the call. We'll be getting started here in about two minutes. We are in lecture mode, but thanks everyone for joining early. If you'd like to join us via the webinar, which will be really helpful for today's call, you can go to ensable.com slash web and that'll take you directly to the screen share application. Again, welcome everyone. We'll be getting started here in about a minute. I want to make sure that everyone gets situated. We are in lecture mode, so if you have any questions, feel free to use the webinar tool to ask any questions at the end of the call. You're also welcome to reach out to any of our team members, and they'll be happy to take care of you if you have any specific questions. We will be recording this and sending out a copy of the recording probably later this afternoon or Monday morning. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Justin Chug, and today we're going to be talking about list building strategies. There always seems to be a need for certain types of lists, and finding the right type of data for the right price can be very difficult. We know that there's a lot of big players like Discover Org, which does an excellent job when it comes to data, but there are some limitations there. We're not going to be spending too much time with Discover Org, but we are going to be talking about how to use the Ensable data platform to get the data that you need. To start out, if you go to Ensable.com slash data, you'll be able to see or access the page that we're looking for. This page is actually a public page. It doesn't require any login. We simply use your email to verify your identity and then we send you the list there. So at the bottom of this page, you'll see that there's an email section. 
that's where you input your email, and that way, we, that way we can verify you. But it makes it much easier. So if you're on the road, you don't have to remember your login. Um, this is an easy way for you to pull the data that you need. Now, at the top of the page, you'll notice that there's a, there's about four different sections. The first section is talking about locations. And this is really important because as we talked about in the past, geography is one of the fastest ways to lower customer acquisition costs. The closer you can get to the client or prospect, the lower your customer acquisition costs are. And there's a number of reasons why this is. One of the factors is that commonality is much stronger locally and people like to work with people locally, even if you're working with them um, remotely. But it's important to layer these uh, pieces on because what you'll find is that we can layer on lots of different filters. Um, but in this section, we have four different categories. You can either search by address, city, state, or zip. The address tool it has been primarily used in two different ways. One, we use it for lit buildings. And if you're doing lit buildings, the sweet spot is working on rural lit buildings that are, ne that are near net. A lot of times we'll have... Um, on net lit buildings that have been sitting in a database for years and the direct reps have already hit the building a million times. There's nothing wrong with doing those buildings, but you're going to have a much higher return with new lit buildings or to, lead, to be lit buildings. A lot of times if you reach out to the different fiber providers, they'll give you a list of companies or buildings that they have approved but they just need at least one client in order to finish the build. Or you can ask them for underserved buildings. Also, as I mentioned before, it's a great, uh, this is also great for working with your customers. So if you take your customers' addresses and start working with their neighbors, that's also a great way to build some instant rapport. There's probably some other ways that you can think of using this, but again, um, the address tool is the only tenant building tool on the, on the market. And so you can drop in a list of addresses. Typically what we're looking for is just the address and the zip code, not a zip plus four, but just a standard five-digit zip code. It only does U.S.-based and Canada addresses. Anything outside of that would need to be a custom request. But if you do have any questions, there's a chat box here in the corner. If you get stuck, our team members will be happy to get you through that. With the zip codes in city and state, it's pretty sta uh, standard. The states do need to be abbreviated. So if you're doing California and then you want to do Texas, do just type it in like that. Same with the zips. Separate it with a comma, five-digit zips only. Now, there's much more to the tool beyond just geography. Now, if you put, dropped in a list of lit buildings that you're focusing on, you could layer on additional filters. And so all of these are complementary to each other. With the next section, which is existing data, you can actually filter through or actually re this is like a data refresher. So if you have, let's, let's say you're working on a win-back list, chances are a lot of the contacts on that win-back list have changed. So you can drop in a list of company names and or websites, and the system will go in and refresh all of those contacts for you. Or if you have past customers or existing clients or LinkedIn connections, because LinkedIn doesn't give you any contacts, information, you can drop in those filters here. Now, you could say, well, I'm only looking for companies in my backyard, so show me my LinkedIn connections that are in my city, for instance, or have a presence in my city. These geographical filters are not based off of headquarters, although we can do headquarter filters for you. or your LinkedIn connections, or your win-back list, you can find the competitors of those companies. And so what this does is it's going to look for any companies that are related to those companies. Essentially what it's doing is it's looking for companies that know each other. So it's going to find three to four different companies. It's not necessarily just companies that are in the same industry, but companies that would know each other's names. Now this is done using an algorithm, um, using search engine traffic that identify companies that customers would know based off of the patterns that we see across the web. Now, in addition to existing data, you can also layer on the technology filters. There's quite a few here, so you may get a little <clears throat> overwhelmed. 
But primarily what the technology centers are designed for is for selling UCAS. Because one of the primary focuses of UCAS is to enable um, workforce optimization, you're going to want to be able to identify applications that can integrate well with the UCAS services that you're selling. A sweet spot is, we've talked about this in the past, but a sweet spot would be any type of applications that are unique to a specific vendor. So as you're working with different suppliers, you may ask them, do you have any integrations that are unique to your platform or, or somewhat unique? A lot of times what they'll do is they'll, they'll have a large customer who has a specific type of application, and they'll custom build an application for them. And as soon as that happens, that's something where you want to come in and see if there is a software or application that we can identify that finds these clients. Now, a lot of folks ask, well, how do we find this information? Typically, we find it using three different sources. One is DNS records, and another one is website um, HTML content, and the third one is job postings, which identifies different applications. So a lot of times when they're looking for a new IT manager or a new marketing manager, they'll say, you have to know this type of application which helps us identify which types of applications they're using in-house. That information is then stored on the Unstable side, which allows us to identify which companies have which data points. Now, not all data points are 100% visible. So sometimes there's gaps, and sometimes they're more visible. Uh, for instance, email is really visible because every company has to be able to show publicly what type of email service they're providing in order for email servers to interact with each other. So it just kind of depends on some applications will be have greater visibility than others. Um, if you don't see the application that you're looking for, feel free to send it over to us and we can see if we can find that for you, see if there's some type of uh, trail or digital trail on the web that would allow us to identify that. Now, I'm going to go through a few of these quickly to kind of show you some other examples. So beyond just UCAS, there are some other applications here that you might want to consider and think about. When it comes to e-commerce solutions, these are obviously going to show you companies that are using some type of online sales application. Now, these types of companies, if they're using an online sales application, that means they do a lot of business on the web. And so you may consider talking to them about a disaster recovery solution for their website or talking to them about a, secure, a security protocol for their website that might work well for them. Or if they are doing a lot of online business, we talk about reducing latency on their website or talk to them about their accounting platforms and integrating that with their phone system. And so you can see here when you click on any of the items, it shows you all the different e-commerce platforms that we've been able to identify. And you can go in and click on any of them, and it will pull those lists for you. And again, these can be layered on. So if you were pulling a building list but you wanted to talk specifically to companies to use, um, let's say, authorized.net, then the system would be able to distinguish which clients in those buildings or within that geography use that. Um, in addition, content management systems, these are great. Um, a lot of times there's different chat functions and different um, integrations that you can look at. Chat is going to be a big opportunity in the UCAS space because any company that's doing chat integrations with the phone system <clears throat> or with a different accounting platform, this is a huge win for converting companies because this is where companies are spending a lot of time. So look at uh, different ways and different um, platforms that have integrations with these types of services. Also within the email solutions, a few best practices that I've seen here that different Ensable clients have used is uh, there's a lot of consolidation when it comes to technology in general, especially in the software business because of, because of the um, the nature of the platforms, it's easier for big companies like Office 365 and Google to create amazing platforms because it's simply software, it's not hardware. And so because of the consolid consolidation, it's easy to find companies that are using third-party um, email solutions that may not necessarily be up to par to what the marketing market standard is today. And you can go in and find them and make them easy uh, pickings for Office 365 or Gmail. Oftentimes, they're already thinking about that. We've done a few different calls on Office 365. One is the audit call, and the other one is finding Office 365 clients. 
you want, might want to review that in terms of executing a strategy related to that. But that's probably your best bet for these. Also, again, integrations. Customer relationship platforms, again, this is always the, the cream of the crop when it comes to integrations, especially if you have a unique one. Most people try to focus on Salesforce. I would probably avoid that <clears throat> just because um, everybody integrates with it, so you're not really differentiating yourself. You really want to create a blue ocean for what you're trying to do. Um, ERP solutions, advertising. Um, if people are running advertising solutions on their website, that typically is a good indicator that they're driving a lot of traffic to their site, which means their servers, their disaster recovery are going to be high priority for them as well as security. So definitely you can use these as different um, clues as where is what types of solutions to sell to what types of clients. There's DNS technologies, which will expose a lot about what types of um, infrastructures they're using. Email IT security, again, if they're using email IT security, it's probably because security is priority for them. You may talk to different security vendors that you work with to see which of these would be interesting for them. Maybe there's an integration, maybe they do a better job. Maybe there's some low-hanging fruit here. But again, this is a good indicator that security is something that's important to them and that they're probably willing to invest in other areas of security or explore other options. In addition, um, you may also keep an if you're using the Ensable Monitoring or if you're using Google Alerts, it's always a good idea to track these different vendors. If they do have any type of security breaches, it's always a great opportunity to reach out to these companies and talk to them about those types of solutions. Uh, CDN, again, this is companies that are interested in lowering latency. Phone providers, you can read in between the lines. Um, a lot of times it, these smaller vendors do have a hosted, I, hosted IP platform, but they're not necessarily um, organic or part of the core platform. They're typically writing somebody else's platform, and so those are usually easy pickings. But this will allow you to identify different companies that are using different phone providers, web frameworks, phone type. Uh, one caveat on the phone type, this isn't always accurate just because the public records don't always reflect the right information. We do have some algorithms that read into the different phone providers to, to, to alter that data. But just because it says landline or VoIP doesn't necessarily always mean that it's landline, landline and VoIP. And that's why I say you may want to read in between the lines a little bit when you're looking at some of these providers. Now, it is based off of the DID provider, so when you see stuff like bandwidth.com, Sometimes you can we can determine who the phone actual phone provider is, and sometimes we end up getting the DID provider, and so that's just another caveat that you have to work through because of the way the public data is for phone service providers. Um, SSL service again, a security protocol. Name servers. This will give you some indications about who they're using for their name servers, which will give you more information about their infrastructure. Uh, general apps. A lot of times. Apps that don't have a really good category, but you may find some of the apps that you're looking for in here. Marketing technology. So this would be something like Marketo, um, any type of marketing automation. But this is important for you to understand. This is this would be a good UCAS play. <clears throat> Java solutions, not necessarily as relevant, <clears throat> but sometimes you may find some something that would be helpful for you. Managed IT providers. So what this is doing is it's looking at um, a lot of times managed IT providers will have different data points that help them manage those clients. And sometimes these are hybrid uh, managed IT providers, but you can go in and find companies that are using some type of managed IT service and determine which ones they're using. Sometimes there's a good solution there. Maybe you're working with a managed IT company and you'd like to pass a list on to them. Um, that might be a good resource for you and then work off of. This is a general IT security solutions. So again, if companies are using IT security, there's a good you can share that uh, type of data with your security vendors. They would know how to tackle that, which ones to work with, and how to what type of strategy to put together with that. But we'll we'll cover each of those more in depth in the future. And again, web hosting provide another infrastructure 
data point. And likewise, with the email, <clears throat> everyone is also consolidating in terms of hosting as well. And so we're going to continue to see a lot of consolidation in the industry. But any, anyone that's using um, a less known uh, hosting provider, typically with time they're going to end up switching to either Microsoft or Amazon, and so you might as well help them in that process. But this is primarily used for identifying companies that are not yet, yet that have yet to move to the to the top two. Also, it's great for tracking companies if any of these hosting providers have outages, which you can go to downdetector.com to check on those. We also track that for you automatically via Insable. But you can identify companies who may have experienced an outage and reach out to them using this list. Now the last section, again, we've covered a lot of territory. I know this is a lot of information. That's why we have the chat button here at the bottom. So if you do have any questions, reach out to our team. The last filter is the business filters. And this is probably one of the most unique aspects of the Ensable list building tools. Again, most of the technology information here is 100% proprietary to Ensable. You can't find that anywhere else. Um, and likewise, with a lot of these business filters, you can't either. So with other list tools, you can get industry and um, organization type anywhere else. But what makes this tool really unique is you can also filter by recent events. So there's a long list of recent events. If you want to find companies that are, for instance, doing a joint, a joint venture, that would require probably some type of secure connection between the organizations or some type of integrations. Or if someone's uh, has an IT job opening, that would be a great list for your managed IT provider. Um, if their IP addresses are expanding, that means that their data center footprint is expanding or subnets. If they're looking for desktop support folks or if they're recently blacklisted or they just got funding, again, all of these areas can be filtered into this list or if you just want a list of companies who have layoffs or awards or natural disasters, this system will automatically pull that for you. And that's what's really fun about this list building tool is it allows you to layer on those actions. Now, it's going to give you some details as far as what, um, what we know about these events in the data that it gives it back to you. Once you finish layering all your filters in, you would simply put in your email address and the system is going to then send you a spreadsheet. So this is going to go to the email address that you have set up within Ensable, and you'll get this is what your spreadsheet is basically going to look like. It's going to have all the standard information like company, website, contact information, LinkedIn, email. The phone number here is not a DID, but it's just a general phone number for the company, title, function, company's industry, employees, revenues, um, HQ information, and then also the local address of the company that we were able to match with uh, the data that you requested. So this is the spreadsheet that comes back. Um, well, great strategy to use with this in conjunction with building these lists. You can also take this and drop it into your following list. And so if you're not familiar with Ensable, we track companies for changes. So you saw that at the bottom of the list building tool we can, where we can filter by events. Those events can be monitored in real time. And so any of the companies that you want to prospect to, you can basically drop those company names into the following tool. And then Ensable will send you a daily report highlighting all of the changes that are taking place across the different companies that you're tracking. And so essentially it, it breaks it down for you and lets you know what's happening and what's changing across all of these different companies. So if you're, basic, if you're working with lit buildings or your customers' neighbors or your customers' competitors or Office 365 clients, you can try to find an event that would make it easier for you to work with them and, and work your way into the business. And so that's everything for today. Again, we've covered a lot of ground, but I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware and understood how to use the list building tool that exists within Ensable, primarily because it has a lot of different filters and layers. And so hopefully this was helpful in shedding some light on how to make this work. And with that, we're going to go ahead and open it up for Q&A. If anybody has any questions, I'll stick around. And if not, um, we'll go ahead and see you in two weeks.
Now, Jason had a question. He was asking where the site is located. The site is located at Ensable.com slash data. Another question from Keith. Um, again, another point that I think would be helpful is if you do have any list that you need to build that don't seem to fit into this criteria, just feel free to reach out to our team members. There may be a good chance that uh, we have the data point, but we just don't have it built into the system. There's a few other data tools that we have, but uh, we just need to figure out uh, how to get access to that data. So Keith is wondering about how to how to identify companies who have experienced a critical event, fire, active shooter, et cetera. So that's a good question. Um, I'm trying to think, there's a number of critical events, but fire, natural disasters. We have we do have some data that fee, that flows through the company news section that identifies um, natural disasters beyond just uh, hurricanes and tornadoes. Um, I'll have to double check to see how much of that data comes through, but like security breaches, downturns, um, restructuring, layoffs, those may fit some of those criteria. Natural disaster would, but a lot of times natural disasters related to earthquakes and tornadoes and severe weather alerts that are in their area, but they weren't necessarily affected by it. We may be able to add additional filters here based off of news that identify specific companies that have been affected by flooding or fires or have been directly affected by some type of a robbery. But I'll have um, some of our developers take a look at that. But uh, thanks, Keith, for that. That question, <clears throat> I think that'll probably lead to some good opportunities. Any other questions before we wrap up? All right. Well, again, if you need anything else, feel free to reach out to us. Hopefully this was helpful. We'll see you in two weeks, and thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great weekend, everyone. Take care.